Hey guys, this video we're going to look at subsidies in an open market. And an open market being a market where international trade occurs. So we're going to look at a market for cars because pre uh, recently the manufacturing market of cars in Australia has struggled and the government has paid subsidies to this market. So we're going to use welfare analysis to examine the changes in consumer producer surplus and the total surplus in society. Firstly, with a subsidy, then secondly, without. And they're going to analyze the changes and analyze the efficiency on whether a reduction in subsidies or removal of subsidies completely has on this market. So first we're going to look at the domestic supply or the domestic supply curve without a subsidy. And this domestic supply curve is upward sloping. I'm just going to denote this DS. And this is without, without a subsidy. So the government has not assisted this market at all. The domestic demand curve, again, is downward sloping. And we're going to denote this D with a, with a little d at the bottom. So domestic demand. And this is downward sloping because as the price decreases, consumers will be able to consume more. So with a subsidy, this means that the supply curve shifts to the right, or the domestic supply curve shifts to the right. This is due to a decrease in production cost and also a more protected profit margin by the government. So this is domestic supply with. So when the government gives out these subsidy payments to businesses, that means they are able to invest in more uh, capital, they are able to maintain their profit margins, and they are able to operate at a higher quantity. Okay, so now we can see that in an open market, it is often the case that the the market price or the world price is below the domestic market equilibrium with and without subsidy. So the world price, which we're going to do WP, is still below the domestic supply line or the domestic equilibrium price, either at here or here with the subsidy. Yeah, so with this in mind, we can see that domestic supply with a subsidy, we can see that the quantity supplied at the world price, which is the prevailing price of the market, is QS1, we're going to call it. The domestic demand at this world price is QD. So as we can see that there is a shortage in supply, because quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied, so the difference here would represent imports. So, but without the subsidy, we can see that the where the world price crosses the demand or the domestic supply line will be here at this point there. And we're just going to call this QS2. And so, instead of having imports as only being to make up the difference between QS1 and QD, the domestic demand would, would stay the same relative to this world price, but the domestic supply would decrease if producers or if the government reduces their subsidy. So as a result, the imports here would actually increase by this magnitude there. So that's the imports. So we can see what the subsidy actually is with an unregulated market and a regulated market. So at quantity supplied here, the producers without this subsidy are willing to produce only at this price here. So if we, if we drag out this line, this vertical line upwards, we can see that domestic producers are only willing to produce at this quantity QS1 at this price here. And this price we're just going to call PS, the price supplied without a subsidy. So to incentivize production, what the government does is actually pays for the difference. So although they're, they're selling at this price, at this world price here, the government pays them a subsidy to make up the difference of the money lost. So the difference between PS, I'm just going to note here, PS minus the world price equals subsidy payment. So that would be the subsidy payment paid to these producers by the government. 
So now they're, they're supplying a QS one and they're subsidized PS minus WP. Now we can apply some welfare analysis having considered that. So we're just going to label all these all these blocks again. A, B, C, D, E, and F. We can see that with a subsidy, with this subsidy, the consumer surplus is still A plus B plus C plus D plus E because they are willing to purchase at anything above the world price. So consumer surplus with the subsidy is A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Producer surplus is here. So they're, they're receiving at this price at PS. However, the, the consumers are purchasing at this price at WP. And they're, this is protected by the government. So the profit margin at PS is protected by the government as the government subsidizes these producers. So producer surplus is anything that they're willing to supply at less than PS. So producer surplus would be B plus F. The government revenue, in fact, would not be government revenue in this case. I'm just going to note that this could also be government expenditure. And this, with a subsidy, that they would actually, in fact, be spending more money. And so this government expenditure in the form of subsidies is how much they actually subsidize these producers. So they're subsidizing them for this world price here to make up the difference between the price at PS and the price they're selling at. So they've sold this quantity QS1, and so they're only selling at the price at the world price. So the government has to subsidize the rest. So the subsidy would actually be PS minus WP, which is the difference in profits, multiply how much they're supplying, which is at QS1. And that equals the price of the subsidy. And this is denoted by this little square box there. So the government revenue would actually be negative B minus C. So as a result, if we just add all this up, we can see that the total surplus in this society would be A plus B plus B minus B, which is B again, A plus B plus C minus C, which cancels out, plus D, plus E, and plus F. So that would be the total surplus in society. A plus B plus C, A plus B plus D plus E plus F. However, without this subsidy, we can see that the government no longer needs to pay this difference in price. So consumer surplus, so the imports in this case would actually increase from QS1, the difference between QS1 and QD, to QS2 and QD. So instead of domestically supplying that much, this would in fact turn into imports. So as a result, what we will see is that consumer surplus won't change, A plus B plus C plus D plus E, because we're still purchasing at this world price. So the change is zero. Producer surplus, however, has decreased because they they no longer have the assistance of the government. They are without without this subsidy, and therefore they are only those producers are only willing to produce below the world price gain, and that is shown by this little triangle here in F. So without is F, and as we can see, the change is negative B. The government no longer pay subsidies, so their change is plus B, so without, excuse me, without, they no longer pay subsidies, so they have zero, they have no expenditure. And so the change would be plus B plus C. So we all add all this up, the total surface will be A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. And the change, if we add this column up, will be plus C. So we've actually gained in efficiency or in surplus this shaded pink area in C. So as a result of a reduction in subsidies, we've actually gained a total surplus in C. And that's gain as government revenue. 
And what the government revenue could do is that they could invest in further projects in areas where we have comparative cost advantage. So instead of uh, preserving this market on cars, we can invest further into, say, mining or other areas where we have the comparative cost advantage. So instead of occurring this dead weight loss of C with the subsidy, we have regained this measure of inefficiency and that with our subsidies, as a result, the market or the economy in this case would be more efficient and therefore living standards in the long term would be maximised.